What does fried chicken have to do with race? Don't white people like fried chicken? And what's so offensive about fried chicken? Well, today we're going to talk about the history of African-Americans and fried chicken. And if you like stories like this, you can find more stories like this at OneMikeHistory.com. Also, if you like to support the channel, you can do so at my Buy Me Coffee, my Patreon page, in the description below. Give us five stars on our podcast and support the YouTube channel. But without further ado, let's get started. The concept of fried chicken goes all the way back to ancient Rome. A Roman cookbook named the Abacus was the first to suggest the recipe of fried chicken. However, it was the Moors who truly developed and refined the art of frying chicken in the Mediterranean. Traditional fried chicken as we know it has its origins in two distinct cultures, Scottish and West African. The Scots were the first to introduce the idea of frying chicken, which was quite different from the usual European cooking methods of baking and broiling. There was evidence that the Scots had been deep frying poultry in fat since the Middle Ages. An interesting piece of evidence from 1773 diary of the writer James Boswell wrote about a dinner he had in the Isle of Skye, which included fried chicken. One of the very first known written recipes of fried chicken comes in a British cookbook entitled The Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy by Hannah Glass in 1747. The recipe loved by both British and the American colonies in the recipe calls to cut two pieces of chicken into quarters, lay them in vinegar for two to four hours with salt, pepper, a bay leaf and cloves of garlic, and very thick batter. First with a half a pint of wine and flour, then two egg yolks melt a little butter, grated oregano, some chopped parsley, beat very well, dip your fowls in the batter and fry them up in a good deal of hog lard. Wow, it was Scottish immigrants who first introduced fried chicken to the United States. They were definitely not the ones that popularized it. That was done by Western Africans. During that time period, Western Africans were very familiar with the cooking chicken and they usually used a braising technique. However, once in America, enslaved Africans used their culinary traditions to introduce the concepts of seasoning and spices and imbued the flavor and zest into an otherwise mundane dish. See, at the time, the Scots weren't putting any seasoning in their fried chicken. Upon arrival, enslaved people found themselves in an alien landscape amidst an unfamiliar food and culinary norms. Nonetheless, they were expected to utilize the ingredients that were accessible to them while continuing to draw on their deep culinary traditions. African culinary habits bustly featured poultry and fowl and chicken played a significant role, making this an easily adaptable ingredient when they reached the new world. Their culinary skill and ingenious improvisation of the enslaved people played a huge role in the growth and popularity of fried chicken. They combined their African cooking techniques with already available ingredients in America to create something completely different. For example, West African cultures use palm oil most often for frying foods. However, in America, enslaved Africans had to switch to using lard or pig fat, the fat of other animals, to fry chicken. This was because those ingredients were more readily available and less expensive. Chickens also played a significant part in the lives of enslaved people. Chickens were amongst the few animals that enslaved people were permitted to keep and care for, and they became a key part of their meals. Raising chickens was manageable and presented enslaved people with an opportunity to express some level of independence. Chickens also had economic importance because sometimes enslaved people were allowed to trade or sell their surplus eggs and meat for other goods. However, if a chicken fell sick or died, enslaved people were forced to eat it to avoid wasting the food. Therefore, they came up with the idea of cleaning and seasoning the meat, then frying it in hot oil. During slavery, fried chicken was a luxury reserved for special occasion. Although the recipe is extremely simple, preparing it took a lot of time and effort. Not everyone had access to the right kitchen tools or even the access to available poultry. Still, as more and more people tasted fried chicken, it began to disseminate across the South. And by the end of the Civil War, the connection between African-Americans and fried chicken was already firmly established. In the period following the Civil War, mass-produced fried chicken and inexpensive oils became readily available. However, during the same time period, racial laws restricted employment opportunities for African-Americans, particularly women. So, 
they resorted to selling their homemade fried chicken, often considered Sunday meal to travelers. This economic strategy helped propagate Southern railways and therefore solidified fried chicken as a Southern staple and a nationwide symbol. The best example of this took place in Gordonville, Virginia. Despite this small town of only 900 residents, Gordonville, Virginia was an important stop for two major railroad lines. During that time period, trains did not have dining cars, so passengers had to figure out how to feed themselves and some would pack their own food while others chose to purchase meals during their trip. Spotting a business opportunity, African-American women used to sell their homemade food to passing travelers. They would serve fried chicken and pies and biscuits and deliver them to the hands of passengers on a platform through the train windows. The women were known as waiter carriers. But by the turn of the century, majority of the trains began to equip with dining cars and governmental regulations became more stringent for platform food vendors. And as a result, this innovative business tradition had to come to an end. During the Great Migration, many African Americans moved from the South to Northern industrial cities, and they took their food traditions with them, including their beloved fried chicken that reminded them of their former homes. Over time, African Americans started to eat fried chicken as a staple meal after church. They also would serve the best part of the chicken, typically the breast, to the pastors as they visited the home. During this time, chicken would become known by gospel bird or the Sunday cluck. This would continue up until around World War II when fried chicken was still only being enjoyed on special occasions. It was still relatively labor intensive process. But by the 1950s, the popularity of fried chicken exploded due to the rise of fast food chains. Many entrepreneurs in the fast food industry saw America's passion for fried chicken and decided to capitalize on it. Companies started to brainstorm ways to quickly cook up a massive amount of fried chicken and serve them fresh to their customers. It was during this time period that fried chicken went from being a national American dish to an international dish. However, it was also during this time period, during the Jim Crow era, where racial stereotypes between African Americans were closely tied to fried chicken, asserting black folks as poultry thieves and ravenous eaters of fried chicken. This portrayal cast African Americans as inherently savage and unintelligent, as predatory, lustful beings who exhibited primal, uncontrollable affection for food, particularly fried chicken. In 1915, the film The Birth of a Nation popularized the trope of African Americans as chicken thieves, painting them as dim-witted and lazy. In one scene, elected black officials were seen swigging from whiskey bottles and putting their bare feet on tables while another man is seen ravenously gnawing on a chicken bone. Such imagery permeated deep into the 19th century, and these stereotypes continuously showed in various types of movies and media and TV shows and advertisements. These often showed African Americans indulging in specific types of foods like fried chicken and watermelon. This was propagated to the point to insinuate that African Americans were less intelligent and highlighted white society's perceived cultural and racial superiority. This stereotype was often employed with the human trope to belittle blacks, thus underscoring black people's subjugated status. In today's world, the stereotype persists and the media plays a significant role in establishing and perpetuating and amplifying these stereotypes. From racist depictions, minstrel shows, to negative portrayals and modern advertisements, media contributed significantly towards the racial myth-making of fried chicken. Even as attempts to counter these negative stereotypes in contemporary media, old tropes occasionally resurface and underline the persistence and cultural baggage that fried chicken seems to carry. In 2010, a Kentucky Fried Chicken commercial in Australia depicted a white person calming down a rowdy crowd of black people with fried chicken. While the ad was labeled as racist, it's also seen as an example of exactly how these stereotypes continue to spread. It forced KFC to apologize publicly and pull the ad. However, Despite these stereotypes propagating the media, many African-American chefs and food writers have made efforts to attempt to reclaim the narrative and highlight the historical and cultural significance of fried chicken. They continue to elevate Southern traditional meals, including fried chicken, to the realm of gourmet cuisine. And the success of Black-owned businesses shows that African-American entrepreneurs can succeed despite these stereotypes. Strides are being taken to dismantle these stereotypes, but the work is ongoing. As historian 
Michael Twitty points out, fried chicken is a soul food classic, but it's not the whole of African-Americans culinary heritage. Nonetheless, fried chicken continues to remain a staple in many African-American gatherings and celebrations and resembling resilience, resourcefulness and culinary creativity amidst a history fraught with hardship and repression. Thank you. I'm your host, Country Boy, and this has been the history of black people and fried chicken. If you like stories like this, you can find more stories like this on MikeHistory.com. Thank you, everyone, for the support, including my new Patreon members. Also, support the YouTube channel and give us five stars on Apple Podcasts. Please.